What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one we're talking about the best fixtures from game week 31 to 36. Which teams have them and which players from those teams, if any, should we be looking at? And for some of the teams on this list, they're still in Europe. We're going to have a look at the fixture congestion as well to try and work out whether there's going to be any rotation and whether that should play a part in our thinking. So if you enjoy it, give it a like, hit that subscribe button if you're new around here as well. We're going to start off with Burnley. I don't want to cover too much on this just because I feel like I've spoken about them a lot, a lot over recent videos because they've got the two double game weeks coming up, 31 and 36. And to be honest, all the fixtures outside of that are pretty good. They're not perfect, but there's nothing wrong with them at all. Norwich, Wolves, Watford, Villa as the four fixtures, or sorry, the, the fixtures they're playing in the four other game weeks where they don't have doubles um, from 31 to 36. Now, just really quickly, right, I've put five names on here because there's five names for the graphics, but... I don't think Tarkowski, Roberts, etc. are players we should really be looking at. Now, obviously, there's uh, this is still early in the break, so there are some kind of fitness concerns around the likes of Reese James, Trent Alexander-Arnold, uh, and stuff like that. But if you think about what your perfect defence would look like going forward for the rest of the season, you're probably looking at Trent, Robertson, Reese James, Rudiger, maybe keeping hold of Doherty and Regulon, uh, who knows? Cancelo as well, Laporte too, right? There's a lot of defenders... Tarkowski and Roberts don't really deserve a spot in our teams, even with those extra fixtures. I think if you want to cover Burnley from a defensive point of view, or you fancy having a defensive player with these fixtures, then Nick Pope should probably be the one. I actually think if I was wildcarding this week, as you would have seen on the video yesterday that Nick Pope is probably the goalkeeper that I would go with. I think if you think about goalkeepers that got a lot of fixtures before the end of the season, maybe the chance for save points. It's really Pope, Schmeichel and Pickford. And I just think a lot of Pickford's fixtures over the next six weeks are really bad. And Schmeichel, I don't mind. But realistically, if I could, I'd go for one of the defenders instead. Schmeichel's a bit cheaper. That's the only kind of good thing but I think Nick Pope is probably the one just because so many extra fixtures another double to come that's not even listed here right we don't know exactly when that's going to be but I would I would take a look at him would I necessarily swap my goalkeeper to Nick Pope not necessarily but I wouldn't completely rule out I've got Saar from um from Wolves I wouldn't completely rule out swapping him to Nick Pope this week I know Man City's not great save points another double etc so Nick Pope's a good option and that's the reason I wouldn't go for Tarkowski or Roberts or anyone like that uh, I definitely wouldn't go for McNeil Veghorst is the other one that I want to talk about again briefly because I've spoken a lot about him he's only 6.4 million he's pretty cheap there's a lot of fixtures on this list where there could be goals Everton Norwich Southampton Watford are probably the main ones and then you've got leftover fixtures of West Ham Wolves Villa and Man City not necessarily easy but he could get goals there. I'm not saying they're going to score a huge amount of goals. The main reason is there's just not a huge amount of other strikers, right, at that price, which is why I came up with this list. This is my cheap forwards list at like 7.5 or under. And you've got players like Richarlison. I mean, realistically, if you were going to go for an Everton forward, Calvert is the one you want. And I'm not sure how much we can rely on him to keep playing over and over again, like 90 minutes back to back right now. Maybe he'll be fine. I don't know. But do I want to risk it? Especially with the fixtures they've got. I'm not sure about that. Antonio obviously hasn't done a huge amount for a long time. I think I mean, it's maybe a bit lazy to say that West Ham are knackered. But they are still in Europe. That is going to start playing a part. Uh, we saw Antonio come off a little bit early against Spurs as well. Yarmolenko has obviously been getting minutes. Bowen's missing out as well, which isn't helping them either. And he is 7.5 million, so he is another 1.1 million over Veghorst. Then you got Adams at Southampton, but I think a lot of people would probably go for Breuer instead for, for someone that's a bit cheaper. And then Chris Wood, Emmanuel Dennis. Like I actually don't mind Watford's fixtures. I think they're actually pretty good that are coming up. I can actually um, quickly show you just that they're actually all right. The problem is... Watford aren't all right. So you've got Leeds at home, Brentford at home, Burnley at home from game week 32 to 35. But you have got Liverpool and Man City in between that. And I just, I just not sure about them right now. When you can get, you can like guarantee those extra fixtures from Veghorst. The only thing that worries me is his expected goal involvement numbers are the lowest on this list. They're just not good for a striker in any way, right? There's, there's defenders like Trent and Robertson that are going to be as close to him, if not miles ahead, like Trent is. Um, and it is a small sample size, and he could come good, but you are heavily relying on the fixtures, which isn't a bad thing, 
but the, the numbers don't look great and that does worry me a little bit but i just think if you're spending six even if you're spending 7.5 or less but definitely if you're spending 6.4 or less i don't think there is a better option so bernie fixture is pretty decent i think if you want to go for veg or pipe the reasons why um, i've given before i still think they're good options but that is about it so man united's fixtures are probably a little bit better than they actually look on the fixture ticket that i got written there because leicester just haven't done enough defensively to make me worried about having my attackers play against them Everton have been really poor for a while now. Lampard just hasn't got them playing at all. They're still conceding a lot of goals. Then they play Norwich in 33. Obviously, the Liverpool... Uh, second fixture is much tougher but you've got Norwich in there and then you've got the chance for some more points hopefully against Liverpool not necessarily a huge amount but it's there Arsenal away is not going to be easy but then you've got Brentford at home as well so I would say Arsenal away is probably the worst game week there because even though you've got to play Liverpool they still get to play Norwich that same week so the fixtures aren't that bad the problem is Man with Man United is trying to fit players that you might want in so I've got De Gea and Maguire but I unless you already own De Gea I I don't know why you would bring him in again i'd actually rather go for like nick pipe right now maybe even schmeichel than i would for david de gea because man united defense just hasn't been fantastic not saying the other defenses i'm mentioning have been but they've got more fixtures and in some cases they've got better fixtures as well so i think you can kind of write the hair off from that point of view and harry Maguire, just for all the same reasons i spoke about tarkowski and roberts just ain't getting into our defenses uh, with all the other options and the problem is the likes of Tellez and Shaw and Dallow and Varane like none of them even Maguire himself are not completely nailed to play 90 minutes every single week the only thing with Man United is they are out of Europe now they've got no other competitions to play for the first 11 you'd imagine should start most weeks even that kind of double game week Norwich to Liverpool I would expect the likes of Ronaldo Fernandez, and Sancho to have a good chance of playing twice and that could apply to some of the defenders I would assume it keeps changing a bit, but the first choice back four is probably Dallow, Varane, Maguire, and then one of Tellez or Shaw. And that's a little bit of a harder call because Luke Shaw hasn't been available um, recently. But I just don't see why you'd want to go there. So I think you can ignore Man United defence. I do think the attack is worth thinking about. I think a lot of people say that I'm biased with Man United, but I think a lot of people are kind of biased the other way in that they just write Man United off without really good reason from an attacking point of view. I think, yes, they've had poor results against the, the likes of Atletico and uh, Man City and, and teams like that, but these are great teams, right? Um, they're not as good as... Uh, sorry, they're a little bit better than like Leicester, Everton, Brentford, etc. And if we look at recent results, it's not too long ago stuck three past Spurs, maybe a bit fortunate to win that game. Like Spurs were pretty good, but stuck three past them. The Watford game, I know it was nil-nil, but how it was nil-nil, I do not know. Man United just missed so many chances four against Leeds two against Brighton and they haven't done that badly but again the problem comes back to where do they fit in Ronaldo's 12.2 million if you go for him you are not having Harry Kane in your team and you could argue that with the double Leicester Everton and a double that Ronaldo could outscore Kane I know people will laugh at that but again Man United played Spurs which one of them got the hat trick it was Ronaldo it's not like he can't still do it but I don't, I, I would fully agree with anyone that owns Kane that they wouldn't want to make that swap. So he's difficult to fit in. And then you've got the same thing with Fernandez, right? He's taken the spot of probably Kane or probably Son. And even with the double, I'm not sure people are going to want to make that swap. So I would find it hard to sell you Man United players right now. Sancho's a little bit cheaper at 8.9 million, but his numbers, like 0.4 expected goal and bomb just hasn't been that great. And I could turn around and say on the eye test, he's looked good and he has. But the numbers don't lie. Like his goal threat is just not that high. And again, he's a bit cheaper, maybe a bit easier to fit in at 8.9 million. But he still has to take someone else's spot. And I've got a midfield five right now. And there's other players that I could fit in there, like Mason Mount, like Kai Havertz perhaps as well. And that's already six players without even getting a Leicester midfielder in. So where the hell does the Man United midfielder fit in? So for me, I think we're going to ignore Man United and they're probably going to continue to score goals in all these games and do well. Will they do better than other options? I'm not 100% sure. But what I will say is, if you're one of those managers that likes to do things a little bit different, maybe you're really far behind the ranks, you just want to do something crazy, I can think of crazier things than going for Man United attackers with these fixtures. Again, I'm not saying they're essential. I'm not saying we should rip up our teams. And I almost certainly will buy no Man United players for this run. But if you're not free hitting in 33... I think Leicester, Everton, Norwich, Brentford are all good fixtures. You get the extra minutes against Liverpool as well and then hope for something against Arsenal. You could do crazier things than go for a Man United attacker.
Leicester are one of those teams that feel like they've got loads of options, but also like just zero options at the same time because there's so much rotation worries in defence. In attack, they've got players like Vardy who aren't necessarily fit, and then Ian actually has been playing, but Dak is on the bench. He could come on at any point. Uh, and, and ultimately, you wouldn't expect Dak or Ian actually to kind of play 90 minutes most games. And there's not a huge amount of other options. Now, the fixtures, I was talking about this on stream on Sunday, um, they're pretty good. Like, I think Palace, the double, Villa you know Everton in there as well they're not bad and they do have two more fixtures to rearrange okay so the rest of the season looks pretty good for them I don't think they're necessarily a priority to bring in this week because it's Man United away and that's not necessarily going to be easy but they are a team we should be looking at getting players from now I, I I I don't know earlier on in the season I thought that Madison was probably the better option in my head and when I watch the games I think Barnes is um, kind of, I don't know, he's like a bit more direct, more likely to get you a goal. The numbers don't necessarily agree with that this season. Madison's goal threat is ever, ever so slightly better. He's also more creative. We know he's on set pieces as well. So you could argue that he's the best option, but he's the one between the two that has been missing minutes recently. Whether or not he's been safe for Europe, there's a few fitness concerns there I don't know. And then you come onto the defence and you've got all those same problems again. The other thing, before I talk about specific players in defence, I want to talk about the, the possible rotation for Leicester because what I've done is looked at their fixture schedule. So they've got Man United away on the 2nd of April. Five days later, they, pay the, they play their um, Europa Conference League game against PSV. Three days later, they then have to play Palace. Surely that is prime for rotation, right? Leicester, yes, okay, they get more money the further they up, uh, the further up they are in the Premier League. But there is no doubt in my mind that winning another trophy, right, which would be huge for Leicester, the Premier League, they won the FA Cup, uh, and obviously to get a European trophy as well, even if it's the third one, right below um, the Europa League, Champions League, etc., it would still be pretty big. And that has got to be the priority for them. There has to be rotation for that Crystal Palace game, surely. It's three days after PSV, and it's only another four days until they play them again. Now, obviously, if they're 5-0 up or something crazy, maybe there'll be less rotation. But whether or not they're going to be 5-0 up, I'm not so sure about that. And then three days after the second leg... They play Newcastle away. That's the first game of game week uh, 33 double. And then it's another three days until they play Everton. So the gap between games from the first PSV game to Everton, like it's 13 days and they play five times. Are you telling me that a lot of those players are going to play twice? I don't think there's many. I think I might look to bring Barnes in or maybe Madison. I think either of them could be rotated. So it's all well and good having these extra fixtures, but I'm not sure how many are going to play twice apart from maybe Schmeichel right if he's fit Barnes is probably the attacker that I would go to I just think he's probably got more minutes than the rest of them in him um, but outside of that it gets really tough and I won't go into um, a huge amount on this because I spoke about it before but Soyuncu's fit Amati's fit Fafana's back Evans is back unless they go to a back three there's two center backs uh, sorry four center backs for two spots james justin just played the last game a right back castagna played left back luke thomas is there ricardo Pereira is there there are a lot of players that can play not necessarily multiple positions they got a lot of cover in different positions like you look down the list right so Chu, thomas castagna mrt Pereira, evans vestigard i mean he's not getting a look in at all and obviously fafana is probably their best center back and a lot of them have been out for a while. So you wouldn't expect, right, again, coming back to this fixture run, you wouldn't expect Fafana or Evans just to play all of those games, which is great if you have, like, an Amati or you've gone for Soyuncu or whoever you've gone for, but then you wouldn't expect them to play all the other games either. So I just think it's a lot of rotation in this Leicester side. And even... Even when we've got past the Man United game and then we come to Palace and we look at that great double, I might look at Barnes, but I don't know if I can go for a defender. I think I think long term, um, they have got kind of Everton and Watford. There's also Southampton. They've got Norwich to rearrange. Sorry to go back to this same screen. If they were to get knocked out of Europe, then the conversation changes because... Um, the players are obviously not li likely to be rotated as much because there's no other competitions to play for. But if they go through these games, I think there's definitely rotation in the Palace game, definitely rotation in the Newcastle game. And then whenever the next stage of Europe is, there's going to be more rotation around there. So Leicester on paper look good, good fixtures, lots to rearrange. But I just think there's going to be too many rotation concerns to, to consider going for more, more than one, two at max. There's no way we're tripling up, I don't think.
So Man City's fixtures are pretty damn good, right? If we disregard the fact they haven't got a double game week scheduled yet, like some teams do in game week 33, and theirs will come later on, right? They still look really good, and we know what they can do to kind of weaker opposition like Burnley, Watford, Leeds, Newcastle, etc. If I told you right now there was one defender, two attackers, or one attacker, two defenders that were going to play all of these games, you'd probably put them all in your team right away. Obviously, the issue is always rotation with Man City, and I'm not going to sit here and pretend that there's any player that's going to play all of these games, and we'll come on to the European matches and FA Cup games in just a second. Um, but there are some really good options. Cancelo, obviously the best defender uh, in Man City, has been all season. Most creative. Uh, he's quite expensive now at 6.9 million if you sold him and you have to buy him back, but probably still worth it. I wouldn't write Laporte off. I've spoken a lot over recent videos about the defense of kind of Trent, Robertson, Reese James, Rudiger, Cancelo. Um, I think, let's say, let's say they're all fit. Trent's a lock. I think most people would probably have Trent Robertson or Cancelo and then Reese James, right? If you're going to add a fourth and it's around the price of like maybe a Van Dyke or a Rudiger, you could go much worse than just going for Laporte. 5.8 million, so he's cheaper than all those players I just mentioned. He's pretty nailed on. I think even when Diaz has been around, he's probably played a similar amount of minutes, if not more. Diaz is obviously injured as well, so he's got that left centre back spot pretty much nailed down. 5.8 million for the best defence in the league. That's pretty good with these fixtures. So I really wouldn't write Laporte off because at some point, money does have to give. We can't just get all the most expensive defenders we want in our teams. It's probably going to be too difficult. Um, De Bruyne, 11.7 million. He's a hard one to get into your team because a lot of people have got Salah plus one of Kane or Son so you have to sacrifice one of those players to get De Bruyne in but it could be worth it we're coming to the end of the season I don't like going different for the sake of it like if you genuinely think in any of these game weeks that Kane outscores De Bruyne then you shouldn't just go for De Bruyne for the hell of it but if you are looking for differential points, then going for players like De Bruyne that can be ex extremely explosive on their day, get a big haul, plenty of assists, goals, whatever, um, that ain't a bad pick towards the end of the season, like, like I said, when you're trying to be different. Like, De Bruyne, forgetting what other teams might have right now uh, and what doubles could go in. Like, De Bruyne captain against Watford, Leeds, Newcastle. These are big differential uh, potential opportunities. I'm not saying I will do them. But some people might want to kind of look at that. Depending on the kind of manager you are, depending on how much ground you've got to make up, etc. Obviously, Foden's a bit easier to fit in at 7.8 million. And he has been consistently playing. Like, I just had a quick look at his minutes. I think this is Foden. Yeah. Uh, he's played he played Palace in 29 he's played game week 29 all the way back to game week 22 he's played 90 minutes obviously he did miss some games I think he issues and stuff we won't go into but he has been fairly consistently playing so again it's not to say he's completely nailed on to play every single one of these games but he is someone you put money on to start the majority now the one thing we haven't uh, and just really quickly, actually, I don't think there's any other midfielders I'd really look at. I think Sterling Mahrez, they're even less nailed than kind of Foden or De Bruyne. So I think if I was picking two or three Man City players, they would be on this list and none of them would be Edison. <laughs> I think it's two or three of Cancelo, Laporte, Foden, De Bruyne for me. The one thing we have to consider is the, the kind of build up and the amount of fixtures they've got. Um, so it, I think I think most of the players would be fine for Bernie because Pep does talk about momentum, right? That the team needs a bit of rhythm. So I think he'll mostly play a first choice against Burnley so that they're ready for Atletico Madrid. AMAD was the the best way I could I could fit it in. Uh, and that is only three days later. Then it's five days they play Liverpool in the league. Then it's only three more days again to Atletico Madrid. And then it's another three days until the FA Cup. So there could be, there is almost certainly going to be a bit of rotation. But I just wonder if it won't affect us too much from an FPL point of view. Because, okay, if players miss Liverpool in game week 32, so be it. Hopefully they don't come on for a cameo. You don't really mind if they miss that game too much. They'll probably play Burnley. And then the Brighton game in game week 33 is four days after Liverpool. So I don't know if there would be a massive amount of rotation there. I mean, it's a hard one because you, if you're Pep, you're thinking, okay, you rest them for Burnley, you rest them for Brighton, and you just play your best 11 for those four games. Uh, Madrid, Liverpool, Madrid, Liverpool, which is crazy, by the way. But he's not going to be able to do that. So a lot of it's then going to depend on whether they get through Europe. You're going to assume they will. But with the title race so, so open between them and Liverpool... 
I don't think they can afford to rotate that much. So again, it just comes down to how much do you value Man City players with these fixtures? And they should be valued pretty highly. And I think those top four players, Cancelo, Laporte, Foden and De Bruyne, will get plenty of minutes over these games. Because after that Brighton game, you know, things that whatever happens in that Liverpool Man City game, whether Liverpool win or Man City win, they're not just going to think that's the league over, right? There's plenty more points to come and plenty more twists and turns. So I think they're going to have to keep playing mostly a full strength squad. I think the, the biggest thing, I guess, just quickly going back to this, is you hope that they're kind of, or, or Pep hopes, that they're like two, three, four nil up in the first leg against Atletico Madrid, which seems very unlikely, don't get me wrong. And then in the way game, they can take it maybe a little bit easier. But that's all going to depend on what happens. You know, if they go 4 nil up against Liverpool, I'm sure they'll start resting players. It's just very unlikely to happen. So it's tough to know uh, with Man City. The, the, the most ideal situation might be that you wait until after game week 32 to bring your Man City players in, see what's happening in Europe, see how much rotation has happened, and then see who's likely to play Watford, Leeds, Newcastle, when the other European fixtures fall into place and stuff like that. But I don't think you can go too far wrong with the, the four players top of my list. Let me know below who you're going from Man City, who you are targeting from the teams that I've spoken about. Anyone going to take a punt on a Man United player? Probably not, I guess, but I thought I'd mention them anyway. If you enjoyed that video, give it a like, hit subscribe if you're new around here. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you again soon. Thank you.